Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to another very compelling program where we kick off with our good friend, who we have not seen in a long time, but he's doing important work. He's Mark Murphy, president of LEAD New Jersey. Good to see you, Mark. Thank you, Steve. Good to be with you. Tell everyone what LEAD New Jersey is and why it matters now more than ever. Oh, amen, brother. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you, Steve, because you were a member of the inaugural class of LEAD New Jersey. I thought LEAD New Jersey was not acknowledging that. <laughs> we absolutely do. Um, it was a great class. Great we, class. Are, we are a blessed fellowship, almost 1,900 strong, of leaders from across our state in uh, all, all manner of professional uh, endeavor, from business to professions, academia, nonprofit, and government leaders. And we put together an annual seminar series for leaders across the state to learn more about the issues that affect our state and our communities, and to learn from one another with leadership skill building exercises and what we like to call deliberative democracy, which is coming together and learning from one another. So let me ask you this, Mark. And again, I was honored to be part of the inaugural class of uh, Lead New Jersey. Back in the day, let's say, that's the way when people use that expression to try to hide how old they are. But I'm gonna try this, Mark. Going into 2021, this will be seen in 2021, public sector leadership. Describe the essence of great, exceptional public sector leadership. We're also gonna use this segment on our uh, Lessons in Leadership show program on News 12 Plus. So go ahead, Mark. You bet. I mean, nothing consumes more of my time these days particularly, then kind of dissecting what are the leadership needs today? First of all, I would say leadership is not someone else's concern and it is not a job title. In a deliberative democracy, every one of us has the chance to step up. But what we look for in terms of public leadership at this moment particularly is transparency. Are people who tell you the truth and don't dilly-dally around with what they wish was true. So look at Bill Murphy, look at Andrew, uh, uh, Cuomo Andrew Cuomo in New York and how they have responded to COVID with scientists right at their elbows, trying to, to uh, uh, balance opening the economy with taking the precautions that are certainly necessary with COVID-19. You know, on our, uh, and again, on our Lessons in Leadership program I do with my colleague, Mary Gamba, we often ask about the number one leadership lesson people have learned. And you and I have known each other a long time. When you were heading up the Fund for New Jersey, we worked together then on a whole range of public policy issues. What would you say in your varied, diverse career, the number one lesson you've learned about leadership is, Mark? I think the most important thing is actually not so much what you say, but your ability to listen. And this is what's lost so much in the current era of demonizing opponents, is the ability to really listen to the concern of others, take those words in to help shape our own perceptions, our own responses. Too often, we're so busy formulating our response that we can barely hear the other person talking. No wonder we're so polarized when we don't come together and think collectively about how we can meet some of our most pressing issues. Let me try this, Mark. You talk about how polarized we are, and we are. We're polarized media, uh, polarized citizens, polarized national leadership, Congress and the president, uh, Joe Biden, as we this program will be seen again in 2021. Compromise, collaboration, uh, not only seen as a bad word in the eyes of many, but what we had just had Julie Raginsky and, and Mike Duhame on saying that in some ways voters reward people for not collaborating, for not compromise. Hold on to what we believe. Let's stick together. Let's stop the other. That's not leadership. Well, we've been, first of all, uh, uh, such drastic polarization is not new to our republic. Uh, in fact, as long as there's been a United States, there's been disunity. But certainly in the modern era, we can point to the mid-1990s. Newt Gingrich gave a modern face to uh, the demonization of one's political opponent. 
when you add in social media, we yeah. can now get very precise in our messaging to very specific groups and not speak to the center, which must hold in a democracy. I mean, Steve, I'll, I'll say your work over decades on public television has been to try and create that center space where people can deliberate, can present ideas without shouting each other down. It's very kind of you. By the way, I plug you, that the center holding a wonderful book called The Center Holds by our good friend Jonathan Alter, um, an extraordinary journalist. Um, the center has to, 30 seconds left, Mark. The center has to hold because? Because without it, we are nothing more than faction. Faction by party, pack, faction by uh, uh, where we are in the United States. And disunion is the biggest threat that faces our people right now. It is not an external threat. It is the demonization of one another. Mark Murphy is the president of a great organization called Lead New Jersey. Um, Mark, you honor us by joining us. Let's make sure we talk more about leadership and work together in the future. All the best, Mark. Thank you, and thanks so much for this opportunity, Steve. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, NJM Insurance Group, Valley Bank, PSE&G, Englewood Health, Johnson & Johnson, The Turrell Fund, Supporting Reimagine Child Care, ADP, and by MD Advantage Insurance Company. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by New Jersey Monthly.